welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about my carburetor and what changes I made. First of all, right there, those little flaps on both sides, those are the flaps that hold the metering rods along with the springs. So when I refer to the metering rods, that's where I will be taking them out. I'll be loosening that little screw and taking those out. Um, the idle mixture screws, those are the idle mixture screws. So. In order for me to do this most efficiently, I'm going to put you on a tripod. All right, so I'm going to pop those metering rods out right now. All you got to do with this screw is you just got to turn it like three or four turns, just enough for this flap to be able to move. You'll be able to twist this flap around. Once that flap is twisted around, you can take either a small screwdriver or, or anything really. They just come right out of here. Don't force them. They're just a little tricky to get to, that's all. And I got a metering rod out and I'll pull a spring out here as well. So, I'll show you here. Here is a metering rod assembly. Go zoom metering rod assembly there's a metering rod spring the spring sits up underneath in here and it sits in the carburetor so now we'll go over to the workbench and I'll talk about it some more all right so here's a metering rod spring here's a metering rod real simple to take these out you pull this little pin down here and there's your metering rod these things don't want to let that spring come off. If you look, if you look real closely, if I can get it to zoom in, right there, there's a number on these things. This is 6337. So what that means is it's the thousands between this chamfered edge here, this beveled edge. Right here is 63, right here is 37. This is your cruising, this is your power. Now this goes down and it sits in the jet. When it, these springs right here are rated by inch pounds of vacuum. Now, when it hits, with this spring, it's eight inches. When it hits eight inches, these will come up and then it'll go to power mode, a vacuum. So when you mash the pedal, basically, is what I'm saying is when you mash the pedal, this thing will come up, go into this mode or into this area, and that's what lets the more fuel in. Now, my truck, or my carburetor, I should say, the 800 CFM AVS2 carb came with um, 65 52s from factory. See how that sits in that? See how that sits in that edge just right? That's how you know that's insecured. And is what that? was doing to me is every time I stepped on it and this would go into the power mode this is way too big and I have, was having a way lean mixture especially on the low end so I put these springs in here which from factory Edelbrock comes with orange so that's uh, like a five inch pounds so then these would come up sooner and for some reason you would think that the stronger spring wouldn't let it come up you know soon enough but this spring was a trick to making it run a little richer but then changing over to the 6337 was the was the biggest trick um, we started out gradual you know 6337 is a pretty big jump from 6552 so we started gradual um, and then this is where we ended up now this is Edelbrock's smallest metering rod for both power and cruise it made a big difference, but that's what someone's talking about when they're talking about their metering rods. And then that's what the change I made. Um, so if you're a beginner like me, I didn't know this. I, a buddy told me this. He, he showed me um, some of his old Edelbrock books actually come with a chart. The newer ones don't come with the chart. And as what I'm referring to as a chart is they give you a chart that has these dots all over it. And it's got a lean and mixture ratio uh, diagonally. 
and then horizontally it's got your cruising mode rich and lean or no I got that backwards lean and rich and then it's got your power mode lean and rich so you want to make sure you're in the correct area and if your motor is running extremely lean and you want to get it in a rich for the power mode you find out which number is here where you want to be and then you find out your your metering rod size and your jet size and your spring and what you're supposed to have but if you're not if you don't have that book or you're not as experienced get the calibration kit and switch these I thought changing these meter rods would be a big deal but actually changing these meter rods consists of pulling this little spring down pulling this little spring down and pulling the metering rod out and putting the new one in that's it I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal or, or that little of a, a task I should say so sorry I'm getting a little long-winded with this but I just wanted to inform some people on how to do that but right now I'm gonna throw this stuff back in the carburetor and we're gonna go see how much of a difference this really made I did do some testing so I kind of know but I want to show you guys so so you can see a difference from my last carburetor video from now um, I do not have any clips to put in a before and after unfortunately but I'll try to get better with that kind of stuff so I'm gonna throw this in here and we're gonna go for a ride got one of these I suggest tuning it and digging into your metering rods and your metering rod springs before you get fussy and before you tell me the AVS2 is not a race carburetor or a high performance carburetor think again Edelbrock classifies it as a race carburetor slash performance carburetor the performer carburetors they're an economic carburetor so these carburetors are very well with some tuning. Don't be afraid to tune. It's not that bad. But the only thing that's not very easy to get to is the jets. And you might be able to get by with just doing metering rods. So that concludes my video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please like. Thanks for watching me today, guys. Stay tuned.